All right, we're good. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. I was going to say, you want to say hello? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. Today is Saturday, May 1st. Oh, yeah. Happy May. It's going to be May. Nope. No, it, it is May. It is May. It is May. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh. So, yeah. Wait. I'm Ray. Oh, my gosh. It's I'm, okay. I'm Kevin. And we live in Stratford, Connecticut. We're married. Yeah. We, we have, have our have... dog, Tarquin. He's yeah. sleeping. He just settled down. Today is episode 36. Okay. Good. His last episode. I have zero was notes. I have no what notes either. What else is new? But I have it all in my head. I have it all. I'm like pretty organized in my head right now. Really? So I hope that okay. it continues that way. So welcome. This is a knitting fiber related YouTube channel. Yep. Um, where we talk about all the stuff that we knit or crochet and dye or, and I think yeah. that's about it. What we've done over the past yeah, fortnight. Two, the past two weeks. So yeah, we appreciate you all stopping by. If you're new to the channel, thank you for checking us out. Um, you know, feel free to give a a like, a subscribe, or a comment. Those are always appreciated. Totally. And for all of you OGs, welcome back. It's good to see you. Did you like how I said that? <laughs> You're trying to be Chevis. Did she say OGs? Oh, she does. We just watched Chevis last we night. Did. We did. We watched Chevis' like newest In the forefront of my mind. Oh, it's your dad's birthday today. So happy birthday, Daddy Chevis. Oh, is it? I think so. She posted on oh, Instagram. Oh, yeah. She did post on Instagram. Yeah. And then her nephew had a, uh, his birthday. That was last week. And I remember she posted like videos she did. of that. It was very cute. Is it Cole? Cole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Right. So let's let's get... We're just going to jump right into it. How's our last two weeks been? Good. How about you? Good. Good. I think for the most part. This week... So let's see. Actually, this week was like a... Not a rough week, but it was an unfun week. So I took yesterday Why? off from work. Uh-huh. Like work just was... Well... Work was crap this week. So I does. needed a break. So I took yesterday off from work. Mm-hmm. And then I had like these plans for the day for myself you did have i had delusions of grandeur i, I absolutely 100 yeah, percent did you definitely i was did. like i'm gonna get all this stuff done and mm-hmm. then i didn't get off the couch till about 11 o'clock um and well, then, who are, you're not clocking in you no, didn't clock in yesterday no my uh, i said last night too that i took the day off so i could relax so totally. i really just wanted to relax so i did some knitting related things and then hung out and then my knitting for the past two weeks has been like uh I've ripped out a bunch of stuff and I've had yeah. to start over on a bunch of things. Um, so there's been that. It's okay, though. And then, but other than that, it's been a good two weeks. Not much. That's a lie. No, we did a lot this I past, was going to say, we did. Weeks. We did. Yeah. Um, how, well, before we get into like what we've done, how has your two weeks been? Tell us all about it. Tell us everything we want to know. Okay, so I started, I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's it's been okay. It's just, you know, work has been busy as well. But the days go by fast, so that's okay. I, you know, was counting down to Friday. I think starting Monday morning, um, so that was that was nice. I count down to Friday every Monday mm-hmm. morning. I normally start my Monday morning, so we have like a group chat at work, and it's all of us are now separated. We all worked in the same department, but now we've kind of dispersed to different departments. So I go in every Monday and. I start the chat off by saying good morning and then ask who's ready to leave, who wants to retire. I look at holidays in other countries that the company I work for is in and say, hey, there's a holiday in China who wants to travel because the office is closed tomorrow so we can get there and have a day off. So I, I try to find any any way possible to not um, work. But you're not a lazy person No, at I, work. No, I'm not at work. But who really wants to? No, that's I was going to say who really wants to go to work? I do. I like right. work. No, there are people who really love what they yeah. do. I don't love what I do. Um, so it's easier for me to w- hope to not be there. <laughs> if well, that makes just if need... that makes sense. It does. Find what and, you love. And it's different too. Like I think part of it's not going into the office makes it a little bit harder. And having the team that I worked closely with for several years now being dispersed and not really having a huge team to begin with. Yeah, the with team definitely makes, makes diff- it. It yeah, makes a huge difference. The people that you work with actually for sure. make it for sure. Like I don't have, I don't know. I don't know that I have a work wife anymore either, which is kind of sad because no. everybody needs a work wife or work husband. I know. I had a few of them, and then um, they all, I moved. You got divorced. We got, I, we got separated. Been separated by distance, but distance makes the heart grow fonder. Oh. So, so uh, they're always in my memories. Oh my gosh! Please, it's gonna be one of those days. It's a I lifetime think. movie over here. 
Yeah, I can't wait to for those holiday movies to come I, come back out, huh? Do I, they do like holiday like Christmas in July on Lifetime? Well, we I got sucked in. Not Lifetime, Hallmark. 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 Let's get it. Oh yeah, right. sorry, I beg your pardon. So, no, no, you're right. Big I don't difference. know. I don't know. I start watching Hallmark movies in the fall because I like their fall little get up. Yeah. And then the Christmas ones. Well, we're just um, coming into summer. Yeah, not let, even. Let's we're not still even, in spring. Yeah, let's, let's slow it down. That. Slow our roll. Okay. So what else have we done for two weeks? <clears throat> <clears throat> let's see. We did a b- 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 bingo. Good for you. That Good was job. fun. Yeah. Yep. We did Fiber Hustle bingo. We did. We brought You're... my mom along. We corrupted her. Yep. We totally corrupted her into the world of knitting and fiber arts. Yes. She's making some mm-hmm. indie dyed Oh, yarn maybe I'll show one of her um, her whips. Oopsh, oopsh, oopsh. She sent me a, a whip pick. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, She'll be coming that. over tomorrow with, with Finley. With Finley, the new the new pup. The new puppers. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we did uh, bingo with Fiber Hustle. That was the Sunday after our last episode. Yes. Right. Yep. So was it? I think yes. so. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Um, so we did that. Or or was it the day of our the last day of episode? Our, I think it might have been the day. Of it the was. It was the same day because yeah. I. Waited to upload the video so we got right. home from your mom's. Right. So we went to your mother's house. We did that. She made us cute little, like, springtime hats. Oh, my gosh. We posted a picture on Instagram. We did. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, it's uh, needles at the ready pod. And I don't think we ever talk about our, like, never... Instagram or, like, where you can find us. But all that information is right down below. It is. Conveniently. I think I said that last time. You did? I think, I think you I'm did, trying too. to get better at that. Yeah. We're, um, we're sporadic posters. We are. We're very bad at social media, to be honest with you. Yeah, but we like interacting with people. We do respond to like people when they send us yeah, messages and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like things. I just I'm so bad at commenting on like yeah. things. I did comment too. I try to get better. And I try to share more in our stories. Mm. Of things I feel like are, is this a Wawa podcast right mm-hmm. now so far? Uh no. Okay. Um so what else did we do? So we did that. We've st- we bought a new lawnmower. That was we exciting. We did buy a new lawnmower. That was a impulse buy. It changes. If I ever... Yeah, super impulse. So when no we went intention. to Home Depot to get like grass seed. Grass to seed. get grass seed, and we got grass seed in a lawnmower. Um, so we started doing yard yeah. work, which is nice. It's always um, I think the the build up to doing it yeah sucks. Agreed. But getting it done mm-hmm. is so rewarding. It's one of those instant gratification things. Yeah, but we're at the awkward beard phase right now. So for any of you people who have tried to grow a beard, you know how you get that awkward beard phase where you're mm. like, oh, it's not quite a beard yet. It's, it, you know, do you need to shave? So our yard or front yard, because I had to dig a bunch of stuff up so and put down the grass seed. So it looks a little beat up right now. So it's it like, does. is that supposed to be a lawn or did you just like <laughs> forget something? It will get there. It it's will. a work in progress. Yeah, it's like, still early in the season. That is the one thing I don't know that you know, like... You don't know going into being a homeowner mm-hmm. um, how much lawn care takes. Mm-hmm. It is a lot of work. It is. And for two people who lived in like an 800 square foot apartment. If that. Yeah, if that. For 13 is... years, mm-hmm. coming to this house and having the yard. We're on year five, it. though. So we should probably Are be we? experts. Or is it six? We moved in the... 2019. Okay. December. No. January, no. January 2019. I don't know. Do the math. Whatever. <clears throat> it's such a lie. No, maybe 15. it is. Because we, we moved yeah, in after we got married. So we moved in in 16. Whatever. What is time? Who knows? Okay. So, okay. So anyway, that was two weeks. So we did bingo. We bought a lawnmower. Um, we, um, I didn't get much knitting done. These I didn't two either. Weeks. Like I said, I ripped out a bunch. Yep. Um, I did a lot of yarn dyeing. So yeah, oh, I think we that... had our um, men's knit. Oh my gosh! Together, I totally forgot. We that did was that. our our second one. That was really. Uh, it's nice to get together with a bunch of people. Yeah, we did that last Saturday at two p.m. Eastern time. So that yep. ran about two and a half, three hours. Mm-hmm. We had a good like forty people there. A lot of um, of the guys from the first one joined us again, and we had some new people. Some new faces. So it's just really fun. It's yeah. it's really nice too getting the feedback like while it's going on about how appreciative. Everybody is because, again, it's just getting to knit with people like you. Yeah. Kind getting of. Getting to know you. So we're at the end of this month, we're going to have an open um, knit together. I don't want to call it a knit night because like sometimes it wasn't at night. It wasn't at night. Just for zoom, us, for some people, it might have been. A Zoom knitting. Yeah. Like a knit get together. together. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be open. 
We'll have more details on our next podcast of yes. how you can um, sign up and join. We're probably going to do like the first hundred people. No, we are doing the first hundred people because that we when we bought the license for Zoom, oh, yeah. we have a max limit of a hundred people, so we can't do accept more than, more than 100. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that. The It's going to be the last Saturday. That's... What? Well, the last Saturday of the month is also a podcast day. Why don't we do it on a Sunday then? Yeah, we'll probably do it that Sunday then, the final Sunday of the month. So that's the 30th. Well, we'll get all the details. We don't have all the details yet. But yeah, we'll have that. everything It'll... set for next episode. Yeah. The sign-up will be there. So yeah, so that that's kind of been our two weeks, you know? We're in a pandemic still, so there's not much. I feel like... I know. I feel like there's more. Me too. I don't remember. Me neither. I guess it wasn't important. All right. So before we get into the knitting, let's talk about our um, coupon codes. We have three for you guys. Our first one is from Katie at Naughty Knitting Sacks. Mm -hmm. That is 15% off your purchase. And the coupon code is PRICKLEPANTS15. Yes. Then we have Nancy from Trilogy Yarns. Mm-hmm. We have a 15% off code for you. It excludes her clubs. Yep. Are you waiting for... I'm sorry. No, I, I was just thinking if it's anything else. Oh. Just the clubs. I got sidetracked. Um, And that one is NATR 15. Yeah. No. R- yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. NATR 15. And then lastly, we have our knit swag. Oh, yeah. I love these mugs. I know. I love um, everything that she does. She's doing. A, they're doing a giveaway. Nitswagas? Yeah. Mm. Shucks. Continue. All right. So um, it's on the Kelly game. from Nitswag. That coupon code is also fifteen percent off, and the coupon code is Kevin and Ray. It is, and there is on Instagram right now. Why don't you just go to our page? Um, because. I don't know how to do social media. So hit, th- hit that. No, well, mag- now it's too late. That magnifying. I think it's, hit I think the magna, the little magnifying glass. Look, here it is. Watch. Do, 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 do. Okay, so um, there is an OI Fiber Festival. O I Fiber Festival. Um. Anyway, on Instagram, follow this person. Come on. I don't know. I'm just gonna show this. Can you guys read any <laughs> of that? I can't even do. Can you see some of that stuff? Yeah. Okay, so she's giving away a snowflake mug like these. Um, so just go do something there. I'm so sorry. Oh, we can share. Follow Oi Fiber Festival. I don't know what that is. Online International. Third Online International Fiber Festival. Oh, it starts today, May 1st through the 8th. Join us for workshops, learning, food, culture, and shopping. Mm. I'm going to follow them. I didn't follow them. <laughs> Okay. All right. Knitting. Knitting. So, yeah, that's all our coupon codes. I don't think there's... Oh, no, but we have a knit along. We do have a knit along. It is called the Spring Cleaning Mal. Mal. Yep. That runs until the end of this month. Mm-hmm. So, it is just to get some of your whips completed. We have an FO thread, a chatter thread, and an Instagram hashtag. Yes. Instagram hashtag is down below. In we the have tons of prizes, like, all over the place. We do. We, we actually, actually have to get organized a little bit and figure them out. Maybe but next weekend. Yeah, we're going to have huge prizes for this one. So, Are please... We? Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff, Kev. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's time to it's time to to share the wealth. It's time to spring clean. It's time to spring clean our stash. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, so join us on all three of those or any of those, and uh, we're gonna pull winners from all three. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. That sounds great. Let's get into the knitting. Do you have any FOs? I have two. Good for you. And you? I have three. Okay. Do you want to go first? Um, I'll go first with one. So this, two of the three are the same thing. Okay. This is the Delightful Dishcloth by Charlotte. M- Did I do this last time? Maps. Would you like some help? Is it Marjorie Oh, Banks? yeah. Somebody gave us the pronunciation totally for did. this, and we totally... I don't remember it. Screwed um, it up. But it is a dishcloth pattern. It's one of we'll my favorites now. We'll have that linked now. below in our show notes. We will. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Basically, it's a big old miter square. So I used some Knit Picks Dishy and so we did Dishy Twist. Mm-hmm. Colorway is Kanae. Kanae? Kanae. K-E-N. 
AI. I've done this before too. Block my head. Eh. So I've done two. But we're off to a ro roaring start. Um, and this is knit on a US 6. Yes, so four millimeter US 6. I love the way that the twist knits up. Yeah, these. it's fun. Because it's all marled and... And delicious. Yeah. And I've used these a couple times. It's actually... I really like the way it uses. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I mean. Um, it washes? <laughs> it washes. You like the way it washes? Washes. I don't know. I like the fabric. It's dense. Um, yeah, it's a little bit denser. Yeah. You can get three of these out of one ball. For sure, I've done it before, so I have one more to make, and then I'll finish up that. I'm actually trying to use up our dishy because we do. Somebody mentioned before, like I, when I made that purchase, I bought like 24. Skins yeah, you bought of quite a lot of dishy. But the idea was too is that they're going to be gifted, and we did gift some to um, Isabella and Reese. I know, and to your mother. My so, problem is that I haven't knit one in a long time. No, you have. Not. You do. You do well with I, that. Yeah, I like. Um, this is just the perfect thing to knit if you need instant gratification right or it a takes, break between two complicated projects or something right it takes a couple of hours to knit up mm -hmm. if the, you know if that and with the mitered square for me for whatever reason it flows much easier than grandma's favorite dishcloth mm -hmm. do you think easier. you can knit that and like make a blanket like just there keep are, going yeah there are mitered well there are mitered square blankets so you can knit a bunch of these in like, who does it? Lisa. That could be fun. Right? So Lisa from... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. 72 Stitches on Instagram. Yeah, and knit I, all the yarn podcast. Knit all the yarn. So she has a blanket where she does, I think, the miter square. And I believe it's like a 40 count. Because with a miter square, you you cast on your total number of stitches and then you do your decreases. And that, what's, than that turns it into um, yeah. the square. So, yeah, I mean, you... And that's the cool thing with this one, too. I guess you could make these larger or smaller yeah. if you wanted to. You just reduce the number of stitches that you cast on. Um, How many stitches do you cast on? It is you? a 70-stitch cast on, and you put a stitch marker between 35 stitches. Okay. And then you just start your um, decreases. But I love it. And um, I, I love Dishy Twist. Yeah, it's one of my favorite cotton yarns. I, I really, really like it. I want more but i don't need more no we don't please we don't need any more but yeah so that's my first i have to get into two the... fo's okay i know you knit all the time i'm surprised you don't knit them because they're really like you would be able to do one just watching tv one night yeah i feel like i would mess up the decreases no you have a stitch marker right there yeah okay maybe good i have one can i go hmm um Please this so. thanks i finished my mother's socks this is knit out of uh trilogy yarn champagne chambord royale, royale on her plush base which is an 80 10 10 superwash merino and cashmere and nylon i have a lot left over so i'm going to give my mom the rest of this she had asked for it she's looking for some fingering yarn how much um, left do you have do you know yeah 60 yeah okay. 66 grams or something mm -hmm. like that and I knit her um, two shorties. These are this is Rose City Rollers. Um, it is I, I did it true to pattern. I didn't change anything at all, and I love it. I think it knit up really, really pretty. Yeah, I and I, I've yeah I've never knit socks for anybody else before. So she's gonna come over tomorrow. I did like measure her foot when I was doing the first one, just to kind of like see, cause I, these are knit, um, cuff down and I did, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So I think I did 13 rows of the stockinette for the roll down. I probably could have gotten away with a few more. Um, but we'll see how they work for her. I, it was really nice knitting smaller pair of socks. Oh, I bet. Holy Especially cow. for you. Cause you yeah. knit quite large socks. Yeah. So, um, you know, this, like I said, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. We'll have it linked below. Um, it's a great pattern just for to understand sock construction. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like you could, you don't have to do the rolled cuff. You can, you can do a full length cuff, but everything is there. All the counts are there for you. Um, and what then size this needles is, did you use? 
I used a 2.25 9 inch circular needle. That's 9 inch circular needles. Except what I did for the heel was I used the um, I used uh, DPNs for the um, heel flap and gusset. So do you leave your other stitches on your nine inch i sure do do. nope i let them just kind of like dangle down gotcha yep and then i just use the two um which stitch channel did you use 64 this thank you for asking this is the 64 stitch no i used two point yeah 2.25 yeah i don't know they're fun i really like them yeah the color's really great yeah so and i'm gonna give her this whole little little set i was gonna do it for mother's day but She's coming over tomorrow. She's coming over tomorrow. So, and Mother's Day is in like two weeks. No, it's next weekend. Oh, is it? I believe. I'm pretty sure it's next weekend here. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's that. Okay. That's what I got. Fun um, times. I don't know where the yarn tag is for the the band is, but this is a just a basic Delicious. hat. This is using Amanda Knits um, in her worsted base. This colorway is called Finter, so it has some beautiful blues, like a gray blue, yeah. browns and oranges and tans in here. So this is a self-made pattern. I just cast on 88 stitches on US 6, which is a 4.5 millimeter, mm-hmm. right? No, no, that's 4. Yeah. 4. No. Yeah, I, ju- I literally just said it with a dishcloth. 4 millimeter. So US six for my ribbing, I did a one, I did a German twisted cast on, which I got that from. No, I didn't do German twisted cast on either. I did a tubular cast on, and I got that from the Hatch Hat from Brooklyn Tweed. I used the same cast on that they use. I did a one by one rib for four inches. Mm-hmm. I switched to my US eights, and then I just knit until the total length was nine inches. And then I started my decreases. For my decreases, I used the decrease from the anthology hat yeah. by um, Tin Can Knits, but I had to adjust it because it is for a six stitch or yeah, um, mm-hmm. six section, six section. So I didn't have the right stitch count, so I did it for four. I, I like the four; it, it looks so cool. It, I love the way that that turned out. So Me too. what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit up another hat and then I'm going to do slip stitches to line up with the decreases where the decreases would be. So yeah. you get the slip stitches all the way down the hat. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. I'm going to do something for that. I was thinking about that the other night. Some way to... To, to get like the connect stitches. it all down? Yeah, to, to like break it up. That could be fun. Actually, I really I, love how this knit up. Yeah, it's I've, so much fun. It fits really well for me. I wanted, I wanted like a, a sock head slouch, mm-hmm. but not slouchy and not fingering weight. Mm-hmm. So I, <laughs> I wanted a so not anything <laughs> like it. Just a slouchy worsted weight hat is what you're looking for. No, I I just wanted a worsted weight hat. Okay. I wanted something to keep my ears warm, and so here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It fits it's, incredibly it's really well fun. for me. And I typically knit larger hats. I think I've knit hats that fit like a 23-inch head. Dome? Yeah. Um, so this is great with the brim up. Have some extra warmth here. And I guess I could do slouchiness. Could I? Yeah. I mean, it, well, I look like well, a freaking... I look like one of Snow White's little sleepy or happy or dope i'm probably more dopey than anything isn't there a dopey <laughs> sneezy sleepy happy dopey grumpy yeah, bashful, definitely doc. definitely dopey um yeah so it was a quick knit i like it i like the colors i think i will enjoy this hat and get a lot of use out of it i will i'm actually going to do a dk one too i'm going to knit one up in dk you should our dk collection is growing yeah because my favorite dk um hat is my lyle cap yeah but it own, the brim's five stitches, so it doesn't do much warmth here at all. Five rows, you mean? Yeah. 
five rows. So I probably just do. But you can modify that. Why? Yeah, I'm going to take the counts from that. Yeah. And then, um, just do a four inch brim. Yeah. On it. So yeah, so that is my um, fos. Great. I have one left. It's also a hat. This is this is actually a sock head slouch. It is knit out of um, Nancy's yarn again. I showed this last time. This is llamas and drag. I've been dying for this colorway. Did do you know? My hair is a disaster. What? Oh yeah, we got our haircut set. We did. That was something else we've done. Over I didn't the last put any weeks. product in it. So what? Where was it? Remember, we were just in our knit night. No, Thir- the group one. Where somebody said drag, um, it was James who told us the or the origin of the word drag came from Shakespeare. Shakespeare. The men had to dress as women in the plays, so drag is actually comes from dress as a girl. So, so he the, says it makes so much sense. It does. It makes so much sense for for but, those historians amongst us. Is that true? Because that would be really cool. I know. I thought it was like yeah. crazy. I know. I didn't, we didn't ask that's Dr. where Google. the word drag comes from. Mm-hmm. Well, this is Llamas in um, Drag by Nancy in her plush base, which I love this base so much. It's her MCN base, four-ply, um, 80, 10, 10. It's 450 yards for 100 grams. I don't know how much I have left over. I didn't weigh it. Um, it's quite a lot, though. I did um, center pull on this, so it's, um, you know, it, it's like... There's probably not as much as it looks like. Hmm. Um, I'd also, I modified this a little bit. This is the sock head slouch by Kelly McClure. This is also a f- uh, free pattern. We'll have this linked below. So I did, um, I did a one by one, one by one twisted rib oh, on this. And I was supposed to do it for four inches, but I only got about, I probably did it for like three and three quarters or like something like that. I stopped at that well, point. because we were doing, I I wanted to have like just plain like to get to the stock and net part, so we can do our oh. our knit together thing. So I just wanted to go round and round and just participate in the conversation. And I didn't really feel like doing a twisted rib during all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just stopped early. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then I I um got carried away during our Thursday night knit group, and I just started. I just kept knitting, 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 knitting. It's supposed to be, I think the pattern calls for you to have a total of like 12 inches before you start your decreases. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So I I think I ended up going like 15 inches or so before because I just kept going. I was like, oh, crap. I should probably start decreasing. Um, And I took a page out of Kevin's book. I like copycatted him. I don't know if you can really see. No, it, it looks really good. Like so light. But I did the decreases from that tin can knits pattern um, as well. And I believe that's a free pattern. Um, I don't know. I know that it's from the sh- – I don't think it is. I actually – Really? I think it is because I downloaded it. And I don't remember like going through that whole like, – It's from Strange Brew from what I remember. Yeah. Um, oh, it is free. I also want to actually give credit where credit's due. I got the idea from Lorian from Knitting Posse yeah. podcast. So if you She's guys so aren't clever. watching them, you definitely should – they're a group of four who also live in Connecticut, and they mm-hmm. knit really beautiful um, things. Yeah, this is anthology. I think you probably showed it already, did you? Uh, I did not, actually. I did not. So it's a colorwork hat and cowl kind of recipe. There's a bunch of – it's a really neat pattern. I'm actually mm-hmm. going to maybe knit some hats for this. I've like, used it. The, you did? I've used it for, for hats. some color work? Um, I gave – I did it for a hat for Brayden a couple really? years ago. Yeah. Look how, a, look how um it comes with – Oh, he's so cute. It comes so with cute. a bunch of charts. Yeah, it comes with a bunch of charts for to do all the different color work patterns and stuff in here. I mean, it's a ton. Yeah, they're so I think it's it, really cool. Yeah, it's a build your own type of thing. Yeah, you choose know, your own adventure. Remember those books? I used to love those books. Yeah, you know what? I actually saw a lot of, or I've I don't know, like I've read it somewhere mm-hmm. in places. Remember the um the eye thing. The pictures where you would have to get yes. your eyes all funky in order oh my to see gosh. the image. Yes. I love those. Magic Me Eye, too. maybe? I used to love those. They had like a whole store that sold them. They like, did. I remember when I was look how, in... Look how... That's really slouchy. See, I couldn't I didn't that. fold the brim. Um, But when that, I fold the brim... You know what it just looked like? It reminded me of the hat that Lucy's wearing um, in the I Love Lucy episode. The big white chef's cap. 
Is oh, it yeah. when she's like stomping on the? Is it the one when she's stomping on no, the? No, when they're eating the chocolates and they just keep they, the that's conveyor what, belt keeps coming by. And that's what it reminds. So me with of. the folded brim, brim, it is very slouchy, but it's not as um, it's not as slouchy with the you know the unfolded brim. I'm not a huge. Who did we watch? That with the slouchy hats. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I would need more information. Yeah, it was a podcast. Well. <laughs> Anywho, um, I they... love my sock head slouch. So I um, I modified it a little bit. I like the look of the one by one rib. Um, you can't really see it so much with the, you know, this pattern. I mean, this the yarn because it's it's really light, but it's it's really fun. It's a really fun pattern. I just I yeah. love just like knitting, 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 knitting. I like the pattern, but I found that the I I've said this before. I think I it's a hundred and forty four stitch cast on is the one. One hundred and forty four is what I did. This is the medium size. Is what I did, and I which is odd for me because I found it too loose. And normally, I need to do a large because of maybe because it's because you have a giant dome. Which I don't think I do. I don't think I have a big head. I have measured it, though. That's what people with big heads say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I find my... The one that I knit, I find it to be loose yeah. for me, where it will um, slide off. And it's not a very... I don't find it to be an incredibly warm hat. For me, that's like a, a spring evening and fall time hat. It's not so much a winter hat, for at least yeah. to me. I think with the... The folded brim, like this is a really thick fabric. I think the one by one um, twisted rib also makes a denser fabric too. Oh, maybe. I don't so, know. So um, then like a two by two, I think that's what the pattern originally calls for. Yeah. Because um, right now, if I mean, of course, we're, it's like 60 Spring. degrees outside. So, oh, Nick Jonas is telling me it's time for a walk. Do you see that? It's weird. Why is he talking to you? I have no idea. How come he doesn't talk to me? I don't know. Connections, I suppose. Who knows what's going to pop up on your Apple Watch these days? Um, so that was that love it mamas and drag i have got a bunch left over and i think i'm going to actually use this in a potential like scrappy project so because i love i wonder should we do that should i do this in my fo's they're not really fo's you can use it as a transition okay so i'm going to use this as a transition good idea how did you come up with they're kind of fo's However, did you come up with that idea? And let's grab this. Okay. So, starting today, Happy Knits, Yolanda and Jordan are having their Mal for a cardigan Mal that's running, I think it's like two and a half months. Happy Mal cardigan? Happy. Happy. H-A-P-P-E-E. So, Ray had already said in the previous episode that he was going to cast on. And then I realized I had a whole sweater's quantity of yarn that is meant for a cardigan. So I was like, oh, I'll just cast on two, even though I haven't finished my Boceron, which is still in a bag. So, you know, who needs more sweaters? Obviously me. So I decided to swatch for the sweater. I'm doing, let me pull it up because I did not. Okay. Um, I'm doing the... Ivan sweater. It's a Brooklyn tweed pattern. It is, I've showed it before. It's an oversized cardigan. I finally just bought the pattern to the other day. So I decided I would swatch for it so that I'd be ready to go today. This is. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be nice. Just need it to load. Actually, let's go here. All right. Let's go here. All right, so here's the cardigan. So let's bring it back. A Should moment. I move the microphone? No, you're good. All right, so there's the cardigan. Oh, look, you can see the blue skies. Out so there. it's got like a, th- um, yeah, it's just really big, three quarter sleeve. Are you um, gonna do three quarter sleeve, or are you gonna do like full? Yeah, no, sleeve? that's what the pattern calls for. So uh-huh. in the video for this that I watched, um, when Jared Flood ta- Jared Flood talked about this. Um, he is a bathrobe wearer and he wanted Same. me too. I love a bathrobe in the mm-hmm. morning. Um, he wanted something that he could wear that had that bathrobe feel that comf, you know, that like super comfy yeah. feel, um, but that you could actually leave the house in. Oh my so, God. If I can leave the house in my bathrobe, I would totally leave my house. You in totally the bathrobe. would. I totally so would. 
but he didn't design this. It's designed by Veronic Avery. It's knit on US 6s and US 7s, so 4 millimeter and 4.5 millimeter. So I swatched. I'm supposed to get like 20 inches. No. 20 stitches per 4 inches and 30 rows. And I was off on my initial swatch. This is the yarn I'm going to be using. It is um, Knit Picks Simply Wool Twist. And I'm doing Wordsworth and Wanda. So this is it all here. It is 218 yards. It's fun. Yeah, it's a marled yarn. Mm -hmm. It's all natural. It's not dyed. It's not super wash. So I thought it would be really fun. And I initially saw this. Um, Ross from Smells Like Yarn yeah. showed this on his podcast I, who knew, probably like six months ago now. Yeah, I think I when it this. first came out. And I saw it immediately and I was like, oh, wow, that's number one. It's reasonably priced for um, yarn because it's. And it's 100% wool. Like yeah. non superwash. Non superwash. So it'd be great for a sweater. Yeah. Um, and, well, also, with the, the cool thing about this is what he also showed and what they also have is each. These. This is a combination of the two colors. Yes. Wanda and w- Woolsworth or whatever. Wordsworth. And so you can get. Just one of those just colors. one of these colors. Yeah. Um, this is just happens to be the marl. This is actually really soft. It is. It's even the like these are very soft. Yeah. Um, so this was my initial one. This was on the US seven, and I did not get gauge on it. I what I got I think eighteen and a half stitches mm-hmm. and only about twenty five rows. Mm-hmm. So I went down a needle size, and you can see the difference in size. I went down to a US six. Um, so you can see the difference in the size. Just I got here and just a little bit. Um, and that's wider. just plain stockinette, so you're not gonna like lose the pattern, or, like if there's a pattern in there or anything. Right, like there's that. no pattern. So I checked my gauge as it was drying, and I did get gauge this way. I got my twenty stitches over four inches. Yeah. I think I was still a little bit off, but uh-huh. I have to check one more time now that it's dried, and. I'm okay with both fabrics, actually. Um, this one's a little bit lighter and like drapier yeah. than this, I think. This one's a little, yeah. This, this is, is a little really t- light. This is not going to be like a super heavy sweater, huh? No, this one's tighter when you're going lengthwise. Like, there's not much give here. Yeah. But. Huh. So this is cool. Yeah, I like the. I do. I love the way that it knit up. Yeah. I think it's going to make a beautiful sweater. Totally. I love I that it's that neutral. Oh, this is definitely denser. Yeah, it's much denser. So I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to go with. I tend yeah. to like a, a drapier. This is, this is like holding its shape a little bit. Yeah, I kind, I may kind of like I this like fabric a little bit more. So we'll see. I don't know. You I mean, know we're supposed, it's supposed to be oversized. and. But you know what I did with this one that I did not do with this that one is I did pin this. Um, mm-hmm. so I may have stretched it out too much. Yeah. So maybe I'll, you're not going to pin your sweater though. Right. So, well, the sweater is knit in pieces, so it's going to be, f- Oh yeah, you're right. Four you pieces. Me. So I would have to will, at least yeah. block it before I, I think yeah. block it before I, um, sew the pieces together. Mm-hmm. So I haven't made a decision on what size I'm going to use. I may just go with the sevens just cause this is, I would, I love nice. that fabric is good. It's a very soft, um, yarn too yeah but yeah so that's kind of an fo in the it will be a whip next time yeah sure it's a transition piece yeah that's transition okay all right so let's talk about some whips okay Um, i can link can i follow you with that oh sure because i actually cast my sweater on today this morning at like 7 a.m i'm doing the ranger by jared flood ranger ranger it is a like slip stitch um, pattern. I showed this last time. Um, and I also showed my swatch. So this is what the pattern is going to look like. There. Just yeah, like so. I am using a one-of-a-kind um, colorway by uh, Nancy over at Trilogy Yarns. And I showed this last time as well. This is it caked up. It's a worsted weight, 100% um, wool, non-superwash. I don't have any, I mean, there's no, I have no other, like, real details with this. But, um, 
I so I cast on today. And so here it is. Oh my gosh, you made so much progress. I on can't your believe it. I am like I am so ahead of the game. I will be done this afternoon. <laughs> is this a sleeve? I'm this assuming? is a sleeve. So okay. you so it is knit bottom up, seamless. Um, seamless construction, which I'm a little bit nervous about bottom up because I can't like try it on and see. But if you measure, you'll be fine. Yeah, but you knit the sleeves first. Um, and it's got the slip stitch pattern, the ranger pattern, uh, in the round and flat. So once I get both of the sleeves done and the, both the sleeves, the sleeves are slightly different. You have to mark out if it's the right sleeve or the left sleeve. So okay. I think something must happen where you, where you join the it. Join. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure what this one's going to be first. I'll probably do the right one first, but does it really matter? It doesn't matter. Um, so I am using the recommended needles cause I got gauged like on the dot. Um, so the, this is a US seven and four and a half millimeter. And then the, uh, needle a is eight, uh, eight okay. US eight. Nice. So yeah, so I'm, uh, I just started the ribbing here. I'll do the ribbing for like two inches and then I'll start the pattern, but I wanted to cast on. It was really exciting to actually like cast on. Good for you. Thanks. So that I have there and this is living in, um, I showed this last time, which I love this bag. This bag is humongous is from uh, Bearded Pearl. Do we have any other sweater bags? Oh, no. I'm going to use my... Um... We do. Have, we have a few sweater bags No, you now. know what? I am I need to rearrange... Well, truth be told, I we, we talked about this Thursday night. I don't really use bags. I use the back of the couch. But let's not talk about that. But... I use bags for everything. He does. But I would... I do need so to I use them. I will happily... There are some times that I'm good. So I'll use my Mrs. Brown's bag again for... Yeah. Um, because I use that for the last sweater. I have that well, sitting I downstairs there. waiting. It's got the yarn for my dotted race. I'm going to use my there. chip basket for my shawl. Yeah, my shawl's in my chip basket. Um, all right, so let's move so on. So that was whip number one. All right, I have psh, psh, psh. two whips. Psh. So my first whip I, is... I love, I really love this. A double cast on. Because I this? cast on, I took it off, and then I cast on again. I decided that I needed a sock. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to try to knit my sock again on a... Um, US one 2.25 millimeter needle. I normally knit mine on 2.5s, so one and a half, with 64 stitches. So my last socks that I showed, the Dune colorway from Desert Vista Dye Works, oh, I knit I... those on a US one 2.25 with 74 stitches. So I was right. like, oh, let's do that again. And I cast on and I did my 20 rows of ribbing and then I just started knitting and stocking it. And I tried it on after I had about three inches or so on the needle, and it was just too loose on my foot. And I tried to, or on my leg. So I took it off and I checked the gauge, and my gauge was one extra stitch on mm -hmm. there. But then I went and I realized that the dune socks, I'd done a three by one rib all the way around. So that was causing it to tighten on right. my leg, because that's what ribbing does. <laughs> So I took it out and I cast on again and I'm doing a three by one rib on this one as well. So this is a colorway by Lolo Did It. Yeah. This is from the Downton Abbey Upstairs and Downstairs Club that I'm a part of. This is called Hold My Hand. I don't know what month it's from and it has a white mini with it with the blue speckles. I really love the way that this is knitting up. Me too. I think it's gorgeous. That would be a great standalone color. It is. It's a really yeah, great color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Because um, it has some navies in it, and then it has like that blueberry blue mm. in it, and then some very light ones, almost like a, a very light blue-gray yeah. in here. Yeah. So I am using US 1s, 2.25. I cast on 74 stitches, and I did a 2 by one rib for 20 rows, and then I switched to a 3 by one rib, which I will follow... And then do my, I'm going to do a heel flap and gusset. Okay. And then I'll do a three by one rib on the top of my foot. And then the bottom will be stock knit. Sure. And my next pair of socks, I think I'm going to go back to the one point, US 1.5 with. Well, you were also looking at maybe doing zeros. Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> What's a lot of work about it? Because it's because we have to me... get more needles because we don't have zeros. Well, I would need to get more needles. And then it, the, it would just take so much longer to get that length. But this is Such what it looks liner. like 
caked up. But also, it is I, beautiful. And what I thought about is one of my favorite pairs of socks yeah. are my Wonderland socks. Yeah, from Matt Akers, mm-hmm. and those are knit on two point five millimeter with sixty four stitches, and I love the way that they fit. Yeah. So, but your um, gauge might have changed. You know, gauge maybe. changes. Maybe, maybe. So maybe, but yeah. So I, I just cast these on. I think on Monday. I just. And I worked on these quite a bit. I think it was the only thing I worked on throughout the week, with maybe the exception of that one dishcloth. I think I finished that this week too. Yeah. But yeah, I still think it's a uh, like a mindless knit, a three by one rib, because you, it doesn't take. You know, you have to look down brief, or I have to look down briefly for that quick pearl stitch, but it's something you could um, mindlessly knit. I think. Yeah, I'm sure. So that is whip number one. Okay. How many whips do you have? I have one other whip. Do you have any another whip? I have one other whip. Okay. Why did I think? Because you started. Because you already talked about your sweater. Yeah, I think I'm missing a project. No, you maybe are. I'm not. Do you have your shawl? Yeah. That's my. La- that's my last one. Okay. okay. Um, I didn't make much progress on because it. because you finished your hat last night. As oh. of yesterday, your hat was a whip. You're right. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to knit this, um, be able to knit at all yesterday because we were going to, um, uh, one of our coworkers is going, moving. Um, so we were going to kind of do a little farewell, but it got really busy at work, so we weren't able to leave early. Anyway, who cares about that? Do you want to talk about your next one? No, or you can you want go. me to go? I don't have much progress on this. And I like I said last time, I don't know. Well, now I want to do. I, that's all I want to knit on. But now I started the sweater too. So I'm going to have to figure out how to like split my time. And I want to get a sock on the needles too. So I think we sh- you should do what I said I'm going to do mm-hmm. is um, spend a little bit of time. Like set a thing where it's like, okay, I'm going to work on my sweater for 30 minutes today. Yeah. And once that 30 minutes is up, then... If you want to work on another project, then work on the next project for, let's say, 30 minutes. And then yeah. if you want to move on to something else, then move on to something else. Or I might just not cast another sock on. It's that's, coming. That's a lie. I do like having socks on. You owe it. Yeah. You'll probably cast on another sock and another sock head slouch. Oh, my gosh. I do love. I, I forgot how much I love knitting it. I really do. I don't know why. It's just it's just knitting. Have you ever thought about knitting it? Do you like do you like it being slouched? Like, yes. Or do you, so you like you don't like having it fit to your head, like a beanie. With a- well, it fits my. The, I don't the top of my head. I mean, or no? Would you do the no. same? Ha, have you thought about doing the sock head slouch? Yeah, Lucy, sock head slouch pattern, but making it shorter, so that it's not as slouchy. Like and a Ross hat. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have. Oh, good. But I wanted to do. I want to do a DK hat. I want to do some DK socks as well. Anyway, can I finish, please? So this is this is the Painting Honeycombs um, Shawl by Stephen West. I've shown this a, a bazillion times, but because we just watched Chevis last night as well, she's doing the... She's doing a sweater. Is it, right. is it a sweater or a tee? Maybe a tee. With the same advent. Um... I can't remember the name of the pattern. This is the Halloween Advent by Trilogy Yarns. And I was looking for something kind of different and unique to do with the um, with the minis. And so I cast on the Painting Honeycomb Shawl. I'm randomly throwing the skeins in here, and I'm not going to stab you this time. So I only, I only got, I think, two. I only added, like, two additional colors to this. But then, like, all of a sudden, something snapped. I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to go more. Do more. Do more. Do more. So I only just I just cast on these um, these two here. But it's, it is. Can you help me? <laughs> but it is. Um, it's growing. Yeah. Which is nice. Can you lift that up a little bit so we can see? Oh. There sorry. you go. See? Yeah. So it's going to look really cool when it's blocked. And then the back, I'm really excited about the back as well because it's almost like having two different shawls in a way. Um with the stripes. So I think that looks really, really cool. That's all. That's all I got. So I have one, two, three, four, five more colors to add before I have three full 
repeats of the um, the minis. And then I think there's, I think I'll do like one or two more repeats and then call that a day. And that's living in How? the wonderful chip, chip basket. basket. How many repeats are there? Or like how many so he honeycomb? Says, how many honeycomb sections are in a repeat? He wants. This is a paid for pattern, but I'm not giving anything away. But he wants 55 honeycomb stripes. Okay. So when you're saying that you're doing a repeat, is that like 12 honeycombs? Yeah. I think, well, or yes, something. It'll be 12. Uh, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but he says you can repeat the honeycomb pattern as many times as you like to customize yeah. the size. Okay. I, I mean, cool. I can stop now if I wanted to, and, and be done. And, but I'm gonna keep going. Very fun. That is that. That's all I got. All right. So my last one is I've showed this. I cast it on and I took it off and I cast on again yesterday. Yeah, that was sad. So this is the modular inlay wrap by Stephen West. I am doing the scrappy version. So I got up to section six. Oh my God, I love this. So I'm doing this How version. How fun. With um, a bunch of leftovers. I grabbed them, all the leftover fingering yarn that we have. Mm -hmm. Actually, with the exception of the stroll, because our stroll's down here, so I can look oh, at yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'm going to use it all, because some of it's like self-striping. I got to section six. And I dropped the stitch, and I went to go correct it, and then I dropped. Um, so I started taking the section out, but then I dropped slip stitches. Mm. So then it was all a mess, and I didn't know how that was going to affect me trying to pick up the stitches, because you mm -hmm. have to pick up slip stitches on your borders. So I, I didn't know if I was going to be off like by something. So I was like, you know what? Let's just get it right. So I took it all out, and I started again yesterday. I've only done two sections so far. Yeah. Um, oh, you almost stabbed me in the schnoz. <laughs> so this is going to be, you need three, you actually need three needles. So you need three pairs of US fives to do this. Not um, three individual needles. No, actual pairs. So I'm using currently my Chowgoos. I'm going to use my Knitter's Pride Dreams that I have and... Um, I have some Addies that I'll probably use. Now, can you just, like, if you need to put these on hold, can't you just take these out and put the stoppers on and just reuse these needles? For, I could. With a different cord? Yeah. I, pro I, I may actually, that might actually make more sense. Instead of having to pull out and having, like, all these needles flying all over the place. Yeah, maybe that might make more sense. Because you have smaller sections right. here, so you probably don't need, like, such a long But cord. I need a lot of stoppers. I need at least a stopper for two cords, and I don't know that the Chagos come with that. I think it only comes for one cord. But yeah. my knitter's pride. But I, I have stoppers too. Oh, truth, truth. Yeah. Um, so, and I created a project page, and I'm going to write... You did? I did, because I'm going to put... What? What ask I used me how for... My, ask me how I did with my project page. You haven't been on Ravelry since last year. Oh, that is, that is untruth. <laughs> so, I'm going to um, keep track of the colors that I use. So, That's this smart. first color, I have no idea what the colorway is. I know it's Plymouth Yarns. Yeah. I used it for my vanilla latte stock, so I'm gonna have to go you back did. and watch the episode and see Matter what the fact, color was. Wasn't is. this your contrast? Right, that yarn is from To the Max Yarn Co. Yes. That is from a mini set that I bought um, from their company, and I used these together in the same socks. Have you seen their yarns? There's actually, I'm oh probably gonna go God. buy one today, and I'm not gonna say the name because I don't want anybody else to buy it. Okay, I um, might want to get on that purchase because because they're like. The, there's one color when I saw it, I was like, "Oh my god, I love that movie!" Yeah. Um, and oh, now I you thought it probably was, gave it away. No, because I'll literally buy it before this comes up. Um, oh yeah, no, ha! <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to wait for it to be uploaded. <laughs> so, all right. So, my thought with this is on this side, I'm going to do another blue for my triangle. I'm a gonna different do, blue. Yeah, I'm going to use the blue for my slip extravaganza. Oh, fine. So a very nice blue. Mm -hmm. What I think I'm going to do for this, guys, is up here, I done a dark gray variegated, and then I did a little bit of a lighter gray down here. So my thought process here is that I might go dark section, light section, dark section, light section, and then the reverse here. So light, dark, light, dark, mm -hmm. and make my triangles... Contrast those? Yeah, because sometimes there's going to be two triangles... And then, so if it's, 
on this side, let's say it comes up against the light section, I would mm -hmm. add a dark triangle and kind of do that. Sure. So they're almost reverse in their the shade maybe, but not the color, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't have a plan, and that actually stresses me out just a little bit. Don't be stressed. Because I would like to know. Um, I like to have a little bit of a plan and know where I'm going with my colors, mm -hmm. and I don't. But I also decided I'm not going to be afraid to break into skeins. No? No. Uh, if I want, like... Yeah, do what so you many, want. You know what? So many podcasters talk about this, and we have all this beautiful yarn. I know. And we're like, oh, it's so pretty. I'm going to use it for a special occasion. Like, when? What's... But what... Like, sometimes that that project comes up. Sometimes it doesn't. You can always buy more beautiful, precious yarn. So maybe I just need to... Um, it's funny that you say some. that because I put the I yarn. Um, Did you put special yarn away? Yeah. Which so one? I wouldn't see it. The um, one from Ancestral Yarns when she dyed up the colorway for Tarquin. Oh, yeah. So I put that aside. But, <laughs> I don't know why, though. Like, what? Are, why? Why? Why can't we knit with it? So, yeah. So that's my inlay wrap. And now the thing I was thinking about this the other day is for the past probably like month or two, I've been pretty monogamous with my knitting. Yeah, and now I have really all good. these projects on my needles. I have three. Do you feel overwhelmed? No, but I'm in that same boat where I don't know what I want to knit on. Like I mm. love, I've actually been really enjoying the socks. Yeah. Um, Cause it goes, it goes a lot quicker than you would think. Um, And I think I'm almost at the heel, but I really want to make progress on the shawl because that's so fun when I was knitting it because it's broken up into sections you totally feel like you you accomplish something when you finish a section. No, you do. You know, and it was just yeah. like, ooh, cool, section two's done. Yeah. Ooh, three. And the triangles are so fast. So once I got, I had done sections one through five, and my next sections were going to be six, seven, eight, nine, mm. and they were like maybe 15 rows each. Yeah. So I could have finished four sections in like two hours. Yeah. And really, really felt like I made progress. So, Well, I was going to do that. Too, and then the sweater, I need to cast it on. At least cast it on today. However many two hundred mm -hmm. freaking thousand stitches that I need for the. My problem is that I have all my projects, and I'll grab some, and I'll do 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 do. You and do. Then I put it aside. Then I will grab another one. Do do. You guys should see it at night. It's one. so funny. And then we... you make fun of me. Well, no, I do. Actually. But that's why I don't. <laughs> it takes me a while to finish things. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, have I just find if I enjoy knitting something. It's okay to just keep knitting on it. That Me too. I don't need to make progress on everything mm -hmm. as, you know. Sometimes, though, I feel like I personify projects. Do you, Does anybody else feel like that? Like you have to say like, oh, I'm going to get to you in just a second. Like they have a personality. Like I don't want you to feel left out. So I've got to knit on you a little Absolutely bit. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. So I don't want you to forget. It. I don't want to forget about you. No? No, I don't do that. I bet other people do that. Does anybody else do that? Maybe All I right. shouldn't have said that out loud. Is that... So that's the knitting content. That's it. We do have... Oh, well, I've, so typically we jump into these things. Um, what are those called? Breaking, Breaking the, the bank, bank and um, Owl, Post. Owl Post. But we're going to jump into yarn dyeing real quick. Oh. I'm going to kind of go through this quick because there is a lot. There's but a lot. I'm going to have it all up in the Etsy shop tomorrow at 12 oh p.m. Eastern time. Scary. Shop um, update. Do, yeah, do, do, shop do, do, update do. tomorrow. 12 no p.m. Eastern time. I think it's like 61 skeins is what I've dyed over the last like three weeks. Some of them I haven't even come up with colorways for. Some of them are one of a kind because I was just playing around. So I'm going to go through some of these quickly. Okay. Do you want me to be on the receiving end? Sure. So we have, I'm going to have two of these. Just yeah. some tonal oranges with very like light patches of gray in there. And I think this is 80-20. I don't know though. I have well, a you better get no. Your... I have it written in my book. I have a notebook right. where I write everything down in. So this is um, again. I just love. I really love this orange. Me too. When it like the the bright orange, mm -hmm. it reminds me of sunlight, it, kind of, mm. of the sun or like a sunset. Oh yeah, it kind of does remind me of a sunset. This picture that I took with the birds in it when the birds, We're because flying. they're flying in the sun, yeah, the birds actually really are cool. black. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me of that. So love this. Love it. Oh, here comes Tarquin. Oh, 
I hear the pitter patter of little feet. Hi, baby. What's up? Hi, handsome. Hey, bud. Want to come lay in your bed? Totally can. It's not time yet, bud. Not yet. We're almost. Not really. We're almost done. All right. Kind of. So you guys have seen this on Instagram, but this is the final version of the Dirty final Ballerina. Final countdown. So I decided to take. I was trying to do like brown speckles and brown spots Mm -hmm. on it. And I don't really like, I didn't really like the way it was looking. So I just put some brown dye in the water to tone it down. The pink muted a little bit, but I'm really happy with it. I love this. I am too. Um, color. Really good job. So there'll be a lot of this. Actually, I think I have like 10 skeins or 11 skeins. Dirty ballerina. Yeah. This is a nice, like, sandy color with some brown speckles in it. This is DK. This is on an eight ply DK, so it's actually two four plies that are then plied together. So, yeah. It's really plump. Yeah, it's a very nice base. Oh, it's super soft. Um, And then these two are still kind of drying because I did these. This is a nice little tealy blue, tealy green. So, tonal. And then this one... It's almost silvery, I think. It's just like a... Almost like a foresty hunter green. Okay, this is a but, lot of stuff over here. I know. But this... Um, definitely they all some... open like that? No. Oh. These are... Because these were still drying oh, this yeah, morning. Yeah. This I love. Yeah, I really like this one. Um, yeah, this is definitely cool. definitely some dark... Darker areas. Mm-hmm. All right. So the rest I'll go through really quickly. This is a one of a kind. This was just using some leftover dye. This is also on DK. Silvery green. Yeah. Then this one was trying to come up with a chartreuse color. Obviously, that did not happen. This is more, very lime green, and there's some teal in it and some blue. Blue. Oh, it's soft. This. Um, I love this one. I do. I really love this one. Um, I was just trying. It's like lilac uh, Technique that I'd seen on a podcast that I had watched. And I love the way that it turned out. Yeah, it's very, it does kind of remind me of lilacs and, um, oh, this would be the, the, like the piston. Leaves. Right? Is that what it is? Piston? Is that what it's called? Remember? <laughs> um, so here's more of the uh, Dirty Ballerina. This one probably has the first. This is on DK. This is the one, the first one on DK yeah. that I tried. Um, what else? So this like pinky, rosy, mm-hmm. mauve Rose petals. Yeah, and it's um, and then sometimes there's just like little flecks of like a red in it almost. This one I actually really really like. Me too. It's really pretty. Didn't expect it to turn out that way. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the fun of it though? Yeah. So this is one of my favorites, y'all. This one I'm gonna call honeycomb. It's this beautiful yellow. But then it has these dark bits of like Goldish mustard brown. Or yeah, something. I yeah. am in love with this one. Mm-hmm, really pretty. It's one of my favorite ones. Like yeah. I'm actually gonna dye. Maybe I'll dye myself some for the inlay shawl. Ooh, fun! Right? Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? I don't know. It's a big bin. Yeah. Okay. This one I'm gonna call blue jean baby. So this is a nice like bluey gray color. I like this one too a lot. Me too. I'm so happy that you're having fun doing this. So much. This is a... a This is cool. This one has like peaches and purples and some brown tones in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. This is going to be a one of a kind probably because I didn't like how it originally turned out. So then I just started adding some dyes and came up with this. And then I think... Kev, I love this. I don't think I saw this one. And then we have this on DK, which is some like mint greens and kind of reminds me of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Yes. Right? The frozen grasshoppers. Like, Remember we were talking yeah, about frozen, that? Yeah, frozen grasshoppers. Is that repeatable? That would be a fun I don't color, remember. Right? I think so. And then last, I think, is this mm. brown, which I think I'm going to call Cocoa because it reminds me of Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa C-O-C-O. No, actually Cocoa Puffs is C-O-C-O-A. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's spelled right. So this is the brown, and I think that's it. Cook. Oh, that's Cookie Crisp. Remember? Yeah, because some of oh them. Oh my god! Remember the cereals we used to eat as kids? Yeah. So that's all the colors. 
that are going to be available tomorrow. Um, That's so much. I fun. definitely have a lot of the honeycomb and the honeycomb and the dirty, dirty ballerina, ballerina are the ones that I have the most of. But yeah, so that's that. Fun. That's the dying. So let's talk about Owl Post. Owl Post. So again, we have for, quite a few Owl Posts. Yeah, for those who don't know, Owl Post is a Harry Potter reference, and this is just stuff that's gotten delivered to us from some amazing people. So if you are one of those people, um, I don't know. I'm sure we always say it. I don't know. But we totally appreciate it because oh, people yeah. don't Thank have to so send much. us um, stuff. We no. And it's amazing. It and, yeah. And sharing Absolutely. it with viewers. Oh, sorry, I hit the microphone. I'm, I'm chilly all of a sudden. It got really cold. Um, so the first thing was just like a surprise. We had no idea that this was coming. Um, I did. You did? I had an idea. Excuse me. I had an idea. So this is um, Kelly from Knit Swag. She always sends us like such fun things. Yeah. And they're like, for me, they're always, they always come at like such random times. And that like it's like so like so exciting to open up a package of hers. Did you realize though? Right? No. <laughs> I knew you did. No, I certainly did not. All right. Ready? So she Wait, sent you're a, too fast. Some tea towels. What? So mine says Kevin's cool and it matches my mug. And mine says Ray Rocks and it matches my mug. And I just realized that. Just now. So yeah. Very, very fun. So How thank cool you. is I that, know. though? Got, like, if you guys seriously haven't checked out Knit Swag, totally go to her Etsy shop. She has, like, phone cases, mugs, these. Oh. Um, I think, like, the Knitter's Graph paper. Yeah, the Knitter's so Graph much, paper is so super much stuff. cool. I think coasters. She, she also has beer like, koozies or um, can koozies or whatever. And, uh... Like actual glasses, like I can't think of what they're called. Tumblers. Yes, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. That's nice, thank so you. So that was one, and then the next one came from Angel, the Scrappy Angel. Scrappy Angel, Angel, who we got. You're gonna open yours. The pleasure of meeting during um, bingo. Bingo. B -b 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 so bingo. we got a shipment from Angel, and um, it includes something from her daughter-in-law. So this is y'all. Amazing. All right, first. It's I didn't a, take mine out. It's a bag, but I haven't seen It's a wireframe bag. I know. I haven't seen one of these bags before. Me neither. So it's wire so frame, exciting. Ready? And it pops open. <gasps> and look at how look at how big it is. I know. It turns into like a little bucket. There's two little pouches on the inside. It's like a basket. It is. It turns into like a basket. And then it just closes so beautifully. Zippers up. And you have her little... Has her little angel. Let's see if I could get it to show. Zipper pull. Zipper pull. Mm -hmm. This is the Marauders map from is this Harry the, Potter. Are they the same? Yes. The um, the I don't know if colors? they're the same color. My this one's red. Guess I'll open it. I'll probably be using it today. I'll have to cast something else on. What can I put in mine? Maybe one of your three thousand products. Oh, so pretty. So, yeah, so these were sent. Um, these are so cool. They are sent for us, and then we got one more. We have one for a giveaway. Yes, so we will use that. And there's for... pockets in here, guys. Yeah, the two Come pockets. on. This is the Scrappy Angel. Here is. Um, Find us on. The card with the um, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram gmail and website so we will have the link to the website below so she also sent us well can um, show that one no because that's the giveaway this stuff is for us i'm not oh. giving this away oh sorry and this is made by her daughter -in -law. daughter in law and i don't know your name because you didn't she didn't put her name but hi so her daughter in law made these stitch markers and included our house colors from, from Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. So I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm a Gryffindor. And he's a Gryffindor. And look, they're... Gummy bears. Gummy bears. Gummy bears. Isn't that the song? No, it's... Jumping it's, around Yeah, gummy something. bears um, bouncing here and there and everywhere. Everywhere. We are the gummy bears. Yeah. So this oh is by gosh. Whiskers and Stitches. I know exactly what you're going to say. 
but down. we'll finish. So whiskers and stitches. We will also put the shop info um, <gasps> down below. I'm so excited about this. And these actually, you know what? They can be stitch markers or progress keepers yes, because they are the ear, the like those earring claspy thingamajiggers. Yeah. So thank you, both of you, very oh, much. Thank we you so much. Totally appreciate it. And I, if you weren't in love with them from seeing what we got, look what you Yeah, all if you're got. not a Harry Potter fan, there's other stuff here. So for you. this, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. Yeah, it's a really pretty fabric. The, um... Look how cute, like love, I mean, they're not like lovebirds, but they're like peacocks. Yes. That are in love. And. How do you know? What if they're about to fight? There's a heart above their oh, heads. Oh, true. Heart is the universal symbol for love. This is also a um, wire um, basket with the pockets. It, what, this is a beautiful size too. For that's like a, a great... two or three color shawl maybe. No, or something I was going to say like that's that. a perfect, um. That's a nice little sock one or hat. You can put like two at a time socks. Keep yeah. your balls of yarn side by side. Yeah, um, that's a good size one too. Yeah, so this is going to be added to our... Um, and look at the the colors. Like the angel, the color yeah. matches the... Are we going to do that for the spring cleaning? Yeah, but it's going to yeah. seem springish. Yeah. So this will be one of the prizes for our spring um, spring cleaning now. You know what it kind of reminds me of too? What? Doesn't it look like it's... Um, the start of a coloring book page where like they started coloring. Like an adult coloring book Yeah, almost. where they started oh, coloring it in. Yeah. It's so nice. I'm going to try to put it back nice and nice. Let's include her card. Oh, okay. Um, put I it in here. In yeah. So that they have her information. Okay. Good idea. Thanks. And then, uh, so that's it for Owl Post, right? Uh, Owl yes. Post, yes. You have acquisitions. I don't have anything. Apparently, I have Part been crazy. Confessions of a shopaholic. I have been crazy with my shopping, which I I don't remember the amount. Like, I don't remember that I did this. But I think some of it came, literally one package came today. Yeah. I believe another package came last after last episode, the same day that we recorded. Mm -hmm. So first, from Trilogy Yarn, I saw this colorway and I knew that I had to have it. And she also started carrying a new base. It's a Surrey alpaca, which I've never knit with and I wanted to try, but I could never find it at my local yarn store. So this is on the first one is on her on the front. It tells you glamorous base, glamorous base. 80, 20. And this is on Surrey alpaca. This is I'm here for it. I am so here for it. I know. This is um, based on some, like, Michael over at Peace for Peace Crafting. Our friend. He loves um, saying, I'm here for it. So he loves saying a lot of things. He's he a trendsetter. Is. So trendy, that yeah, Michael. Yeah, I aspire to be cool like him. But I, lo I love the colors. The, the maroon and the gray and the white in here. It's so good. This scares me. I'm looking f I'm. Oh, it's so soft. <laughs> Oh, what is this? Oh my God, it feels like a little like... Lamb? Lamb. No, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> but it does feel, it feels so soft. Holy hell. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I definitely want to make a hat out of this. Or a, Whoa. I just don't, I haven't found the pattern yet. Is this like a tie? I don't know. I, I don't know how to do this. This is beautiful. I could hold this all day. Hopefully I'm not allergic. Can you imagine Can you if imagine? I was? Oh my gosh. All right. So also, Nancy Boy, started- Boy, you have- Kevin. I know. You should be ashamed so of yourself. so bad. Like, There's what... no yarn shaming here. I don't know what happened. We're stocking the pantry. I put that on there just so we can stay together. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um. So Nancy started a Discovery of Witches club. She has like 25,000 clubs. No, I'm just kidding. No. Four. Yeah. She has her happy hour, Pride and Prejudice- Princess, Princess Bride, Bride, and now a Discovery of Witches. So, a little bit of something for everybody. Yes. So this is. Oh, Ashmore. if you haven't gotten yours, I've had this for like two weeks. Okay, proceed. <laughs> this is Ashmall seven eighty two. Yeah. So it's oranges and greens and yellows and blue, and I love it's it. It's gorgeous. And I don't know what. It... It's gonna be mine. These are like my colors. Look Sorry. how fun. 
No, you you have your drinks, your happy hour club from Nancy. I have a Discovery of Witches club. From we you. share our lives. <laughs> we do not share our yarn. Those are two we separate do share, things. We do share Those a are, lot of our yarn. We do, but that's yeah. there are some um, things that don't get shared, mm-hmm. and this is one of them. Okay. He's going to forget about that version. Absolutely. No, I'm going to cast on a sock right now. <laughs> right this second? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next purchase I made on actually same day, our last yeah. podcast episode, because that was local yarn store day, right? Mm-hmm. We couldn't make it I to our you did this. local yarn store. And it was like at the end of the night and I was thinking, man, we didn't buy anything from anybody today. So I wanted to, th- I tried to like figure out what could I do. Um or who, support, who I yeah. wanted to buy from. And then I was like, oh, you know what? This dyer was the first person who reached out to us um, when we first started this channel and sent us some yarn and has sent us some yarn again. Um, so I went to visit Ancestral Yarns Etsy store mm-hmm. and made some purchases. Because I was like, oh, it'd be really fun to um, support her since she was like the first person yeah. to reach out to us and i think at the time I she love was that just idea. starting her shop yeah so i thought and now she's really got fun. like a collaboration with, with um, um laura from knit for brains knit yes, for brains designs you. yeah so the first colors i got i purchased titus which this is on her durable sock it's 75 25 i love it so it's 437 yards 100 grams and it's a four ply so this is really like a, you know what I could. Ooh. This could be a really fun shawl. Ooh. Oh, this all links together. Um, but yeah, so you have some like deep blues, Ooh. some foresty green back here. Oh, you have the um, oranges and yellows, and all of her colorways are named after family, right? From her family tree. Well, they all have a. I don't a know connection. if they're still. She's still doing family, but she's doing names like Tarquin. Right. Makes sense because it's a name. This one, oh, let me check. Oh, I don't have my phone because we're recording from it. I was going to try. This doesn't have the colorway on it. I was going to check to my purchase history and see. I don't remember the name of this one. I don't know, but it's beautiful. It you is. Just call this it is, beautiful. I love the way that it goes from, you have your very light color yeah. down here, and it just kind of comes up to this, like, steel color here and you have your blue mm. i think this is really really pretty Me color too. too yeah so i got two skeins of each of those and then my last purchase is a club i keep meaning to cancel and i went to the website to cancel and i couldn't find it on my phone and i forgot to go to the website on um my laptop but i'm really happy i didn't cancel i was gonna say it's a really I nice really like this, this one's color, a really guys. good one um you know what I have to do, though? I need to go through all the sets. I do not think I have one color based on Tom Branson from Downton Abbey. I think you might. Which kind of upsets me because, I mean. Look at that mini. That mini can be I like by freaking itself. freaking know. All right. So this is my Lolo Did It. Um, Downton Abbey Club. Downton Abbey Club. Upstairs and downstairs. So this is April 2021. So this, I will say, if you have, if you sign up for the club and you haven't received it, you have a couple seconds to Yeah, this look just away. came this morning. Literally, so. while we took Tarquin for a walk, got back, and it was on the front porch. So this is based on um, Jack Ross, who is a musician that Rose meets and has a little fling with. Mm. And this color, scandalous, right? All right, so I'm going to show it in three, two, one. Here are the colors. This is the bigger picture. This is a set. We will break it up in a second so you guys can see each one individually. The main color Ooh. is called the Lotus Jazz Club. That is where Jack performed and him and Rose met. Um, pretty hello, beautiful. Yeah, and this is on her um, eighty five fifteen, mm-hmm. and it is hundred grams, four hundred and forty yards with a three ply. And it's so that's the same base that I'm using for the socks that I showed earlier. This is phenomenal. I know, I love this one. This one is called Wild About Harry. Look at this many guys. Ooh, 
Look at these colors. I love this. Me I, too. This will definitely. I want be a, a full skein of that. This will totally be socks. I think this would be a fun pair of socks. I that agree. Bright yellow. Yeah. Um, maybe socks for me. Or maybe not. No, because you want to showcase the yarn. So I have bigger feet. So I need larger socks. So more of an opportunity to showcase the yarn. Don't you think? I think not. You can knit me some socks. So I think that's that's all the yarny goodness, right? I believe so. Yeah. We've shown quite a bit. Um, so that brings us into the next topic of what... What have we been watching? So there's actually... Or reading. No, you know what, though? There's two podcasts that we should talk about, too. Oh, yeah. Right? So one, I have not watched previously, but... A new to you podcast. Yeah. She had... <laughs> Um, shared us in the stories. So I saw it, and then I saw that she was a podcaster, so I went and I checked out her podcast. And I've watched two episodes. You've watched one. I've watched two. Yeah, she's really sweet. She's from Norway. She is Norway. Oh, no, sweet. Yeah, Norway. Norway. Yeah. I believe West Coast. Yep. Um, and it is... Um, oh, crap. Knitting Traditions. Yeah, Knitting right? Traditions. Knitting Traditions. Mm -hmm. um, she's a phenomenal knitter. She is, and she's so cute. She is. She's a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. She knit this brown cabled sweater that she designed herself and just like winged it, especially the sleeves and the cables going up to the sleeves, going into the collar. Um, super, super talented. Really love the yeah. the vibe of the podcast. Me too. It's very, Me too. Um, very chill and informative. And she's a huge very fan. Very hooge. <laughs> Don't. You're such a... She's very in. She loves um, non super wash yarns. Yeah. So it's really fun to see all of those. And she uses a lot of um, like native yarns to Norway. So she gets a lot of it from there. So it's different brands that I mm -hmm. haven't heard of. Um, and she's moving to a cabin. Like she's getting a cabin. Yeah. Not her, moving to, but she, like getting. Her and her a, parents recently yeah. purchased a cabin. I want a cabin in Norway. I want a cabin. That was one of my favorite trips as a kid. Um, when we were growing up, we went to Vermont and New Hampshire quite often. That was yeah. like our vacation. We have family in New Hampshire, so we would stay in one of those two states. Growing up, too, my mom was like a crafty person, so we did a lot of arts and craft fairs. So we would go to those up in Vermont and New Hampshire I'm surprised quite often. your mom never got into like fiber arts. Uh, she may have growing up. She mm. she actually liked to sew a lot. Okay. Um, but I don't know that she knew how to knit or crochet. So we went to a cabin. My, I was young because Heather, so my sister was about a year or two, year or two, I would think. Um, went to a cabin and it was just this beautiful place. There was a farm by. We went and hung out with the, like got to see the cows. All, one of the things I remember though is that the cabin had a fly problem. We oh. literally came home or Gross. back to the cabin one time and there were just like a hundred dead flies behind the couch. Other than that, it was a beautiful other, place. Other than the disgusting mess. But no, I would love to have a cabin. I think yeah. if I were to move any place out of state, I would love a, like a Vermont. I would do Vermont or New Hampshire for sure. Yeah. I just wouldn't want to travel for work because they get way more snow than we do. They do. But they're both beautiful states. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so knitting traditions. Okay, sorry. That yep. was one. The other one, I always get really confused because I have to... Um, YouTube accounts, one for us, and then my own personal one. And I think um, I watched it on my the one downstairs. It's like knit to – hold on. I'm going to find them. It's a mother-daughter. The mother lives in Connecticut. The daughter lives in Boston. Let's see if I can find them. Oh, there we go. Knit Inc. That's who it is. Knit Inc. Um, somebody had mentioned that they heard about us or knit ink recommended them. So I was like, Oh, let me go and give them a shot. So I did. And again, they're adventurous in their knitting. And I, I, um, the mother was knitting a sweater and then her daughter was like, Oh, just throw this down here on your, by the sleeves. And I'm like, how do people think of that? I can't do that. Yeah. There are you. Yeah. People are you, you knitters. Did you not show that? Oh, sorry guys. This came <gasps> with my, um, our, my. 
Ashmall, 782. Boy, we're this all over the place. Came with my Ashmall. My uh, Ashmall, 782. Um, yarn that I purchased from Nancy. Because how- I, I get Nancy's Discovery of Witches club only because you were like can i well let me get it because you already have a club of hers because i was ready to do it feel free to sign up if you'd like well i like this <laughs> stitch progress keeper because it's a a locket too it's not fun yes okay anywho okay so so check those podcasts out yes yeah, so it's i actually ink. don't think i saw knit ink you didn't i watched them you watched it by yourself by myself that's not fair we, we could watch more of them because um, yeah. there's another one, too, that I just started the other day, mm-hmm. and she had me cracking up at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm going to hold off, and the two of us need to watch Who it. Who are those people? I don't know. These people all just came up. So we're going to have to... um, Yeah. Okay. So Knit Inc. Whoa. This oh. Fun for a bow, is it? <laughs> Knit Inc. and um, Knitting Traditions. Now we can I talk really about- love the uh, Knitting Traditions. Me, too. She's, she's really cute. Now we can talk about what we've been watching and reading. We've been watching a lot of podcasts. We have. Our regs. Our, our yeah, our norms. Our peeps. Um, Chevis had a new episode out. She did. I think I've said that a few times today. Who else had a new episode? We watched Michael. Michael last weekend. Mm-hmm. We watched Ross last weekend. Gary. Gary. From Urban Yarn. Yep. Happy Little Yarn had a new one that we watched. She did. It was nice to see her back again. So did um, Knit All the Yarn. We watched that um, she has one every week. Yeah, I so love that, though. I know. So we watch her every week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what about TV? TV and movies. All right, so let's talk about movies for a moment, guys. Do not waste your time on The New Mutants. Wow, you're just jumping right into there, Don't huh? do it, please. I didn't like it either. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I don't... You know, it's like, oh, the 13th installment of the X-Men. No. It's a standalone. It has nothing yeah. to do with the X Men. No, and it felt like it felt like a, a B movie, like a B, you know. Yeah, like, it, it, like it a direct to DVD. Like yeah, straight direct to D- straight, straight to, to DVD. DVD. Remember Absolutely. those? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was totally straight to DVD. Um, yeah. I thought I would like it. Uh, it had potential. I, don't know. I felt like okay, here we go, and then it was like, uh, what? Yeah, I wasn't a big fan yeah. of that at all. Sorry. I felt like I wasted an hour and a half of my life watching it. Yeah, I didn't like it either. Um, then the next movie we watched last weekend on HBO Max, we watched the new Mortal Kombat movie. We did. Which I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed it too. I thought, like, again, it's a straight to HBO Max. I don't know that I would have gone to the theater to watch it. Yeah. Uh, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was entertaining. It was better than the ones I remember watching growing up because those were pretty bad movies. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. And then the last thing we've been watching was Shadow and Bone on Netflix. I lo- I'm like addicted to this. I love it. We've watched five episodes. We have mm-hmm. three left. So we'll probably finish those off this weekend. Now you read the series. I didn't read it. And I did. And from somebody who didn't read the, the books, I think the um, the series is the whatchamacallit the show is fantastic. The show's done incredibly well. They get a lot of stuff right. There's some things I so far that I um don't know that they get right. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing some articles like why they've made some of the decisions that they did. Mm-hmm. So it is a combo, though, of Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows. Hi, we're almost done. Hi, we're almost done. I know. Yeah, it's almost lunchtime. We'll be with you in a moment. Come hang out. Come here. Come here. That's all right. I'll get him. Continue. So, you want to come sit? Yeah, with me? Shadow and Bone. Um, it's a good, it's the casting's great. I actually think the casting's pretty spot on for all of the characters. They're, yeah, they I, they did a really good job with that. Very good job. So um, if you like binging wow. TV, you have Netflix, I definitely would recommend, hi, books. Hi. I would definitely recommend Shadow and Bone. Yeah, it's really, really good. Okay. And how about reading? So I finished reading, and it's funny because literally right the second I just got a te- uh, uh, a message from um, from Justin from at the Beard of Pearl is, is reading this, and I think Caleb is too. Um, the Court of Silver Flames by that Haas lady Moss. I can't remember her name. Sarah J. Moss. Sarah J. Moss. And y'all, I have to say that the 
the naughty scenes, I felt that they took away from the story and that they made me feel very uncomfortable. And I may have skipped over a few descriptive um, terms during some of those really intense scenes. Um, I, I For me, it just... I like the story itself. I think it could have been... Um, we, we could have just like inferred some of those um, those naughty bits, you know, with some like creative language like, oh, and then they disappeared into the bedroom and the next day, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> um, because the story was really cool. It was like a, a coming of age, not coming of age, but like somebody, you know, a, a woman who um, doesn't really have anywhere to belong to anymore. She was kind of forced into this lifestyle and um you know hit rock bottom and is like coming back and is not just moving into um good boy not just moving into like another's um i don't know like like type of person she's creating like her own um she like creating her own like individuality type of thing and uh not a specific like group and she's yet accepted by you know by both and there's really like there's some fun aspects of the of the story and bringing other people it's like a you know team building down and out people like coming up and all that but the um the those those scenes were very very vulgar so it's funny because Justin literally just texted me. I don't know what he said yet, but it was he's like talking about um, a, par- a certain paragraph that he just got to. Like I already feel like I can blush th- thinking about some of those things. So anyway, um, I don't know if I'll continue the series if another one comes out. Um, just because of that, like for it just wasn't for me. Those those scenes. Well, was it like that in the previous three books? Now there were. There were some like descriptive scenes in the, the other books, but they weren't anything like this. Okay. This, this was um, this was intense. So I can get past those other ones because it was like a scene here or there. Yeah. This one was just like every every moment. I mean, they were like rabbits. So it was a little uncomfortable there. He's gonna jump. No, I got him. He's sitting. So what are you reading? So currently, I am reading the nice and accurate prophecies of. Um. Agnes Nutter, which? What? Yes. It is, um, yeah, Good Omens. It's a, it's a, they're, they made a TV series apparently yes. out of this. And I didn't know this until I, like, I started yeah, okay. reading the book. So, yeah, Good Omens, The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which is the name of the book. Um, I, I don't know if I'm enjoying it. I think I am. It's it's bizarre. It's like an angel and demon and then like um, the end of the world is coming and it's kind of all over the place. Very interesting. Um, so it's, I'm like halfway through. I, I think it's enjoyable. I, I mean, I'm finding myself enjoying it, but I don't know. We'll, time will tell. We Hi. shall see. How about you? Okay. Um, so I... Started a book and then I stopped like midway-ish through. So I started reading In the Wreckage, Metahuman Files 1 by Haley Turner. Uh And I've read Haley Turner before and I had liked her other books. So um, this is a male-male romance in the future, like 22-something. And they there's chemical warfare and the chemical can either kill you which it does for like 95% of the people, or it gives you, it alters your DNA and you become a metahuman. Oh. So we're following a group of metahuman who work for the government. And I also, it has some um, inti- intimate scenes, but the scenes, I don't mind the graphicness of it. I just 15 minutes of one, I was like, oh, this is quite You would think a bit. we're such prudes. No, it, but then it was, a, it was another one. And so. For me, it's not that there's scenes. It's that... He find... He's a spaz. So it's not that there are scenes. It's that there there were so many. And like 15 minutes in a chapter on the Kindle is 
fight a bit. Yeah. So once I got to the second one, I was like, okay. Um, and as I'm reading, I just don't know if there is a lot of character building in it. So I wasn't sure. And it wasn't what I was looking for. After reading um, Six of Crows and the Crooked Kingdom, I wanted something that was a little lighter. And this definitely wasn't. So I put that down and then I had, I got this book because it was just like on the Kindle screen. So Magical Midlife Madness by, oh, K.F. Breen. K.F. Breen. Oh yeah, I like her. So I've read two of her series before, maybe even a third one I started. And I generally like her books. So this one is, the main character is 40 years old. So that's why it's called Midlife. And she's recently divorced. Her son went off to college. And she's just trying to find herself again. Mm -hmm. Um, And she goes to this town and becomes a caretaker of a house that she visited when she was a kid. And then she finds out all the crazy stuff that goes on in the town and how she's kind of connected to it. And there's just humor in it that's really funny. The characters are great. Um, There's a scene in it where (laughs) she gets drunk. And she literally just thinks that she's talking to herself in her head and realizes afterwards that anything she's thinking, she's just saying out loud so everybody can hear her. And she's just, she's such a funny little, little person. I love her. I love that character. Um, So I enjoyed this. I really did enjoy the second book. Mm -hmm. So I started the third, or I'm sorry, enjoyed the first book. I started the second book last night, which is Magical Midlife Dating. So that's already really funny. Um, <laughs> she she joined a a dating website and she didn't understand why all of her messages that were initially coming in because she had signed up like three days ago were all um, pics uh, um, that all the men were just sending her pics of their junk. And <laughs> she realized that like under hobbies, she put Netflix and chill and she didn't realize what Netflix and chill implies. She just thought like, oh, I like watching Netflix and like hanging out. Isn't that what that means? <laughs> no. Oh, let's not talk about it here. It's no. Today. Here's not the place. No, I know. So it's just there's a really good like light humor throughout the book. So I'm already enjoying this second book. Good. And I believe that is everything that we have, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm looking around and I think that's it. Yeah, we did pretty good. Yes. So. So what are we looking forward to the next two weeks? What do we have coming up? We have a sweater cast on. I do, at least. Yeah. We have just nice weather. Let's just look towards the nice weather. Tomorrow's supposed to be gorgeous. Yeah, it's supposed to be like 76 Mm -hmm. degrees here. Um, I think that's a trip to Elephant Trunk. Yes, that's um, the end of May, May 20th or something like that, May 23rd. That will happen after the the weekend oh, after our we have next our episode. Haircuts that day. No, I made the haircuts for the 29th. Oh, I'm a little confused by all that now, but we'll see. Oh, I get my second shot next Saturday. Yep. So I'll That's be fully vaccinated. Well, I'll have all my vaccinations. Then I'll have the two week. Mm-hmm. Um, period after that. But yeah, okay. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. So. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you, yeah, for sticking around for the yeah. last hour and a half, 40 minutes. Um, again. Do you have a question of the day? I don't. I did, but I think I forgot it. Under the I, bus. I think of it throughout the like week if something comes up that I'm... I have one because we're going to go to... We have to go shopping tomorrow and we're going to get more propane for our grill. What is your favorite thing to cook or eat off of um, a grill in the oh. summertime? Right? I don't know what mine is. And if you for bonus points, because we don't we don't do low points, but do you prefer gas or charcoal? All right. I prefer charcoal, but I hate Me too. grilling on charcoal because it's uh, harder to control the temperature, I feel like. I so like charcoal too. I like cooking with propane because it's easier to control yep. that. Mm-hmm. Um my favorite thing to eat off a grill. I don't know. You know what I really... I don't know if it's a favorite thing. Maybe it's a meal. Maybe it's like an entire meal. Like I love when we cook a steak on the grill with potatoes and like asparagus or Mm -hmm. potatoes or grilled corn. 
Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of one of my favorite things to have. Mine too. We do our potatoes like we <sighs> cut it up, put them in like foil oh. pouches with some butter and salt, pepper. Also, you know what? Grilled pizza. Grilled pizza oh, is yeah, that was good. so good. Yeah, let's it put... It is um, so good. It's one of my favorite ways to make homemade pizza grill yeah. on the grill. Let's put Weight Watchers on hold this summer. No, absolutely. And eat all the grilled deliciousness. Mm-hmm. No, we could eat grilled deliciousness. We can't eat grilled pizza. So I summer. like a nice marinated like London broil on the grill. Yeah. Um, is really good. Mm-hmm. And I love like a Bubba burger or like a, a, a good nice burger. good burger on the grill. Yeah. Charcoal. I True. prefer charcoal flavor, but. I also like. I'm so hungry. Turkey burgers on the grill too. I they're like re- burgers they're too. very good on the grill. They are. I'm starving as Same. well. Okay. And right. I think well, we have a little bit of pasta left over. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that's good. So again, thanks guys. Um, thumbs up. Comment. Everything we talked about will be down below. Hopefully we remember everything. If not, feel free to shoot us a comment either yeah. on YouTube or on mm-hmm. Instagram. And we will try to get whatever information you're looking for to yeah. you. And, and remember tomorrow our shop update. At noon. At noon. Eastern time. Yep. The shop link is down below. It is. So if you see Which I didn't you like, put it in the last one, I don't think. So I did. Oh, good for you. Yeah, good you're job. Welcome. All right. So thank you everybody. I hope you guys have a good two weeks. Enjoy your weather. Enjoy your crafting. And we will see you in a fortnight. Bye. Bye.